ओम ज्ञान तिमिरंधस्यानंजन शलाखया चक्षुरमिले तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमो विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांता स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिण निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातिण जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्ण I remember one incident in Bangalore when we were there. So one grahasta, <clears throat> he approached the temple president, and he quoted one some words by Prabhu Pad, where Prabhu Pad says. the husband must satisfy the wife with jewelries gold and lot of dresses and he approached and he said see prabhu pad is saying all these things and uh, the money which we are getting we are not even sufficiently able to lead a life where is the question of buying all these things and satisfying the wife so sometimes we take certain quotes of prabhu pad and if we don't understand them in what situations under what circumstances for what reason those words are spoken we will misunderstand the literal understanding this life in krishna consciousness even a grahastha has to lead a brahmanical life grahastha does not mean that he leads a lavish life that is not the meaning of grahastha so even in grahastha ashram the devotee leads a brahmanical life brahmanical life means whatever minimum requirements are there we take care of the needs of house wife family children that is the meaning of brahmanical standard of life similarly here if we see the example is given this body is compared to the fort and the senses are compared to the plunderers plunderers means those who plunder away the wealth rogues and thieves enemies so imagine if there is a fort and then there are plunderers in that fort inside the fort itself there are plunderers then what happens gradually they will take away all the wealth and make it pauper it will not remain any more a secured fort so here the body reduce the sound of the restaurant the body is compared to the fort and the senses are compared to the plunderers how <coughs> they take away intelligence they take away all good qualities what we have they ruin the whole spiritual insight of a person that is the work of the senses if they start plundering so senses are compared to plunderers which are sitting inside this fort and here it is said if there is a commander in the fort 
then according to the direction of the commander of the fort the plunderer's inimical senses can easily be conquered so the example is given is that in grahast ashrama the wife is compared to the commander of that fort so that when the senses want to plunder one can take shelter of wife and he can conquer over the inimical inimical senses which are unconquerable in other social orders now prabhupad explains this very nicely so we have to understand it properly otherwise we will not be able to understand what exactly is the purport of this verse prabhupad explains in society if one is not because spiritual life actually begins with brahmacharya this is foremost whether one is grahastha whether one is vanaprastha whether one is sanyasi is different spiritual life begins with brahmacharya if we find if we read in bhagavad gita krishna explains that actually one of the very important qualification of a spiritualist is he maintains celibacy so brahmacharya is foremost very important in that understanding now what is actually brahmacharya meant for brahmacharya is meant for controlling the senses which are plundering brahmacharya is also meant for that if one is not trained properly in brahmacharya that can create a havoc in the society if the student is obedient if the disciple is obedient and there is proper training then that is very advantageous in spiritual life but if one is not trained properly in brahmacharya then he can create havoc in the society so two ways we can see outside in the material world practically in the modern society there is no concept of brahmacharya at all rather from the very beginning we find the students are taught the students intermingle with each other very openly and it is given so much of uh, prominence in the society that if somebody talks about inhibiting these kinds of advances one is considered to be old fashioned then what are you talking this is modern culture it's modern world this is independence you are curbing our independence isn't it so we find practically rather than practicing brahmacharya one practices flirting right from beginning right from adolescent one when one becomes an adult and he intermingles with each other so one is practically practicing indulgence not brahmacharya brahmacharya means restrain so what happens when such a person even though he gets married even after marriage he is not satisfied so one is not satisfied because his senses are so much 
agitated that is not satisfied with having relation with his wife and that's how we find in the outside world they keep relations with so many other people sometimes we hear you know that person is having three wives two wives illegally of course because in in indian law it is not allowed that one can have in muslim uh, religion it is allowed but in according to hindu law it is not allowed one has to get divorce and then get married to somebody else so what they do they illegally do all those things so when a person is not trained as a brahmachari he becomes a so called grahastha he also creates adulteration in the society and another thing prabhupad is saying is one who is not one who is undergoing training of brahmacharya and if one is not trained properly as a brahmachari even when he enters into grahastha ashram he also will create adultery but if one is obedient and if he undergoes proper brahmacharya training then one need not take the botheration of entering into grahastha life at all one can still conquer the senses by serving the spiritual master by serving the supreme personality of godhead this is very clear in purport today that even though kard uh, kashyapa muni he is talking about that wife is like a commander of the fort the senses are like the plunderer and he is saying by taking shelter of the wife one can conquer the senses which are unconquerable in other social orders so prabhu pad explains a man who possesses a good wife does not create a disturbance in society by corrupting virgin girls so a man who is properly trained as a brahmachari and when he enters and takes up a good wife then he does not create a disturbance in the society by corrupting virgin girls then without a fixed wife a man becomes a debauchee of the first order and is nuisance in the society and then what prabhu pad says is very significant so these two have to be understood properly without a fixed wife a man becomes a debauchee of the first order and is a nuisance in the society and then prabhu pad says unless he is a trained brahmachari vana prastha or sanyasi <clears throat> so that means very clearly if one is a trained brahmachari one is a trained vana prastha one is a trained sanyasi unless he is not trained then he becomes a debauchee so if he is trained even he can conquer over the senses either as a sanyasi either as a vana prastha or even as a brahmachari and then prabhupad further explains what is the training unless there is a rigid and systematic training of the brahmachari by the expert spiritual master so one is what are is important training systematic training by expert spiritual master and on the student side what is required unless the student is obedient it is sure that so called brahmachari will fall prey to the attack of sex so converse is also true what is converse 
if there is proper systematic training by the spiritual master and if the brahmachari is obedient to the spiritual master to the orders of the spiritual master instructions of the spiritual master then he will not fall prey to sex we see the example of haridas thakur we see the example of bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur nashtika brahmachari right we see the example of narad muni we see the example of bhishma then all of them were nashtika brahmachari because there was systematic training by the expert spiritual master and they were obedient to carry out the instructions of the spiritual master then one does not have to fear the attack of senses and then prabhupada is saying if this is not then so called sanyasi or a yogi also can fall down and the example is that even vishwamitra muni even though he underwent so much penances so much austerity but when sense object came in front he was disturbed on the contrast we see the example of haridas thakur that even when sense object came not right in front but gave a proposal also for vishwamitra muni there was no such proposal vishwamitra muni was just meditating and he heard the sound of that you know heavenly girl and then he became disturbed because of that but here we are seeing for haridas thakur the prostitute came maya devi herself in the form of a prostitute came to give a proposal to disturb and trying in varieties of way to entice for many days not just for one day isn't it but we see the vow of brahmachari of haridas thakur he was not disturbed so prabhupada is saying otherwise if there is no systematic training by the expert spiritual master one is sure to fall down even though he may be of the caliber of great yogi like vishwamitra muni in bhagavad gita krishna explains that actually a very important aspect of spiritual life is austerity even in bhagavatam we find Prabhupada explains from the teachings of Rishabh Dev where he explains that human life is actually meant for tapasya it is meant for austerity now what is this austerity actually this one has to understand Krishna explains austerity is also of three kinds it is in three modes of material nature austerity can be practiced to give trouble to body to to our own body our own mind our own selves and giving trouble to other living entities one can practice austerity for that also just like somebody is practicing austerity to discover atomic bomb or nuclear bomb he is taking so much of austerity on his own body creating so much disturbance for himself and then creating disturbance for for others hiranakashipu underwent severe austerities he gave so much pain to his body isn't it so giving pain to his own body and then giving pain to other living entities after austerity what was the result when he acquired powers by those austerities he was only simply creating disturbances for others so this kind of austerity is in the mode of ignorance austerities meant for giving pain to our own body our own cells and meant for 
creating pains for the society is in the mode of ignorance. Austerity done for some name and fame, for some temporary fame is all in the mode of passion. Just like we find so many politicians all looking for some material post that by all these austerities he will become famous. It is a fact. If somebody fasts for 2-3 days, he will be published in the newspaper. Next day you will find big article about him, fasting. Isn't it? And then he is taken to the hospital, <coughs> forcefully he is taken to the hospital and then drips are given. We find so many. When this Telangana state was created from Andhra, you know, so many politicians underwent <laughs> severe austerities, not eating for practically one one week. You see, imagine for what? Some material reasons, for name, for fame, for material, for post. And then he becomes a chief minister because people glorify. He underwent so much austerities for creating this state. So like that. That is all in the mode of passion. Austerities practiced to give pleasure to Krishna is in the mode of goodness. When austerity is done to give pleasures to Krishna, to give pleasure to spiritual master, that is in the mode of goodness. That is enlightening. That austerity will lead to enlightenment, not the other austerities. So, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains that actually austerity is of three different kind. There is austerity for the body, there is austerity for the mind and there is austerity for the speech. And when one performs these three kinds of austerities, with the goal of pleasing the Supreme Lord, with the goal of pleasing the spiritual master, then that will lead to enlightenment. So we see this beautiful description in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna explains this in 17th chapter. In the 14th shloka onward, Krishna explains these three kinds of austerity. Austerity of the body, austerity of the mind and austerity of the speech. Krishna says, <clears throat> the austerity of the body consists in this. So, we have our body with which we do karmana. We have our mind with which we do thinking, manasa. And we have our speech, the tongue with which we speak, vacha. We, all know, we also know anyone who engages karmana, manasa, vacha in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he becomes liberated even while living in this body one is still considered to be liberated. Jivan Mukta. If one in any state of his life is simply dedicating his body, his mind, his speech in the service of the Lord. So he is considered to be Jivan Mukta Sauchyate. So here Krishna is explaining about what are the austerities for the body. So this is how Actually, we should understand Brahmacharya is the part of austerity of body. Krishna explains this. Krishna says, Austerity of the body consists in worship of the Supreme Lord, the Brahmanas, the spiritual master, and the superiors like father and mother. So one aspect of austerity of the body is that the body should be utilized in worshipping the superior 
and the superior most the spiritual master and the supreme personality of god worship of superior is meant for making us to understand and submit and surrender to the superior most it begins by training of worship or respecting our superior like mother and father and then gradually when we understand that superiors have to be respected and when we understand that among all these so called superior the spiritual master is the most superior then without reservation we surrender to the spiritual master and then the spiritual master teaches us how to respect and how to surrender to the supreme personality of god so this is how the body has to be utilized gradually to understand that this body should be utilized for worshiping the superiors like father and mother spiritual master and then the superior most the supreme personality of god has then cleanliness see these are all very important we are all sadhakas first of all we should all remember this these are all very important principles of discipline for a disciple these are all very important factors in our training prabhu pad stressed a lot about cleanliness and even talked about it to be next to godliness prabhu pad said it is said cleanliness is next to godliness cleanliness is of two type antar bahir our inside has to be clean outside has to be clean generally we find the so called brahmanas the so called traditional brahmanas they are only concerned more about external cleanliness and one does not know that one who is internally clean is actually really clean external cleanliness should help us to clean us internally and external cleanliness alone is not sufficient that also one should understand it only helps us to clean to keep ourselves internally clean that is most important most important is internally clean if one is internally clean he does not require external cleanliness also there are examples we find the example of gor kishor das baba ji maharaj he would go to municipal corporations laboratory he would sit down there and chant the holy name of the lord all of us are doing chanting in brahma murta time after taking bath coming to the temple hall in shuchi and then we are trying to chant the holy name of the lord but we are seeing the example of gor kishor das baba ji maharaj he would go and sit inside the toilet and he would chant his rounds why nobody would come there and disturb him isn't it but can we imitate him <clears throat> then we will not be able to imitate we will forget all our chanting <laughs> isn't it so this external cleanliness it will induce us more and more towards sattva gun and that will help us to chant with proper attention one who spontaneously attached to the lord like gor kishor das baba ji maharaj is spontaneously chanting the holy name of the lord he doesn't have to bother about external internal cleanliness we see the example of madhavendra puri in his shlok he is saying sandhya vandanam or it is snanam no two three times of taking bath or sandhya vandanam he is saying goodbye to all of them i am no more interested in all these rules and regulation isn't it because all these rules and regulation are meant for us to be to bra- to be to bring to the point of constantly remembering the lord if someone is already constantly remembering the lord he doesn't have to follow all these things understood 
So, but for all of us, for a sadhaka, these are very important. We cannot give them up. Krishna is saying these will lead us, these are in the mode of goodness. Krishna very clearly says, in the mode of goodness, when one performs these austerities, for what? For pleasure of the Supreme Lord, they will lead to enlightenment. That is what is to be understood. So, next is cleanliness. Cleanliness of externals, cleanliness inside. Actually, all of us can see this very clearly. When we have not taken bath, when we have not washed our face, and when we are in unclean condition, you know, even our mind becomes disturbed. We are not able to focus on the holy name. When we are externally clean and everything is clean, it is easy for us to concentrate on the holy name of the Lord. So cleanliness outside and internal cleanliness by chanting the holy name of the Lord, both are very important. Simplicity. This is another very important thing. Even though we may have complex living, sometimes, because especially in Krishna consciousness, because we are supposed to be preachers, we are supposed to be managers, right? So we have to deal with so many kinds of even material comforts we may be placed in. So we may require to travel sometimes by plane. We may require travel by cars. We may require communication with mobile phones, with emails, with sophisticated computers, all those things. All these things should be utilized only in the service of the Lord. We should not become complacent. Comforts of life brings complacency. We should not become complacent in such circumstances. So we have to be very careful. That is why all these things are provided at a certain maturity. So one should not think, why am I denied all these things? In our beginning of spiritual life, when certain things are not given, so we should not think that this is, you know, a disadvantage for me because Sometimes, in our immature condition of life, rather than focusing on the principles of spiritual life, we may become enamored by all these externals and get carried away by all these things. So that has to be understood very clearly. That in spite of all the kinds of comforts of life we may be provided in our spiritual life, one should maintain the simplicity of his mind. If one maintains that simplicity of his mind in any condition of life, he will be able to practice Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, we will become habituated, dependent on facilities to practice Krishna <coughs> consciousness. And then we will criticize and we will think that this is not available, that is not available to me. I am not able to practice Krishna consciousness because you are not giving me all these kind of facilities. So one should always maintain that simplicity of mind in any circumstances. Even though we may have the latest of the gadgets, we may have the latest of the laptops, latest of the computers, latest of the uh, cars or whatever. But in spite of all that, one should maintain simplicity of his mind. Otherwise, we will get carried away. This one should understand very clearly. <clears throat> so, simplicity is another austerity of body. See? So, what all we have understood till now? What are the one is worship of superiors, another is cleanliness, another is simplicity, and non violence. Prabhupada explains, by nature, devotee becomes non-violent. Another importance of non-violence is, how do we practice non-violence in Krishna consciousness? We are already practicing external, that kind of non-violence. Another non-violence is, 
not to hinder another's growth in spiritual life is also non-violence. We should see to it that others are given all kinds of facility required to advance in Krishna consciousness. And we don't inhibit somebody's advancement in Krishna consciousness by not giving them opportunity to advance. That is the way we can practice non-violence. Say for example, senior devotees in Krishna consciousness have a duty to guide the junior devotees. If he is not guiding, he is practicing non-violence. If a preacher is not preaching Krishna consciousness, not giving opportunity to people, not giving opportunity to people to become advanced in spiritual life, actually we are practicing violence. So how do we practice non-violence in Krishna conscious society is by giving chance to others to advance, not hindering, not putting obstacles in another spiritual life. That is called as non-violence. So these are all austerities of the body. And then, this is another very important thing. Austerity of speech. Next Krishna explain austerity of speech. Austerity of speech consists in speaking truthfully and beneficially. Another very important aspect. Avoiding speech that offends. One should also recite Vedas regularly. <clears throat> so, we have to make a balance between truthful and also not truthful in the way that it offends others. You see? So, both are very important. Prabhupada says in the purport, one should not speak in such a way as to agitate the mind of others. Of course, when a teacher speaks, he can speak the truth for the instruction of his student. So that is meant for teachers. Everybody should not become teacher in that sense. You see? So, we should not speak in such a way, actually we should measure that, that sometimes with our words, we may create a havoc in another person's mind. We have to be very, very careful when we talk, when we comment or when we talk to others. We should see, is it a reaction or is it a thoughtful action? This is what we should consider. Some circumstances happen and we react. So reaction is whimsical. We don't even think what impact it is going to have. Correct? That is whimsical. Thoughtful action is different. Some disturbing circumstances may be there. We don't have to react to those circumstances. We can be thoughtful and thoughtfully we should act. Isn't it? So, words we all understand that uh, once the words are out, it will not come back. Correct? Whatever you may do. Some disturbances are created, those disturbances we can try to amend. But the words we have spoken, once it is spoken, the words do not come back. So we have to be very careful what goes out, which we cannot repair later on. Correct? We can put some patches later on. No, I did not mean this, I did not mean that. All those things. So one has to be very careful. And Prabhupada is saying here, so one should not speak those words which will agitate the mind of others. So as a teacher it is different. This teacher sometimes has to tell the truth, you are wrong here, you are not right here, you have to do like this. Many examples are there. 
like i remember one example i read <clears throat> that how sometimes a devotee has to be uh, carry out his services even sometimes without acknowledgement we may be thinking about you know somebody should acknowledge my service all those things so one devotee during the time of prabhu pad he was uh, you know when prabhu pad had come he was having the service of taking care of the room of prabhu pad cleaning his toilet and seeing that things are in place everything and then the devotee found out that the toilet is not flushing properly and then whole night he worked very hard and finally the toilet was he did not even sleep that night then finally the toilet was flushing properly and then prabhupad uh, you know woke up in the morning and then there were nearby fields there prabhupad did not even go to the toilet prabhupad went to the field to clear his stomach you see whole night the devotee worked hard in the toilet and in the morning and then he writes actually his realization that he understood that one should not work for reward he worked something prabhupad did not even utilize that isn't it and then he felt little devastated why he felt devastated because he was thinking some kind of reward from that so sometimes we don't have to even expect such kind of rewards so we have to see we have to act in such a manner that uh, as it is given here prabhupada is saying that when we speak it should not agitate the mind of others this is a penance as far as talking is concerned beside that one should not talk nonsense and then prabhupada is saying when we speak in learned circle we should always quote from the vedas whatever we say we should be ready to back up from vedic literatures that is the meaning of reciting vedas regularly so this is the penance for speech at the same time one should be very pleasurable to the ear by such discussion one may derive the highest benefit and elevate human society the next is the austerity of the mind with that we will end <clears throat> serenity simplicity gravity self control and purity of thought are the austerity of mind so of course serenity should not be misunderstood to be i'll not talk to anyone i am very serene don't disturb me i don't talk to anyone that is not the meaning of serenity serenity means seriousness one is serious in krishna conscious one is not talking nonsense as prabhupada is saying serene does not mean not talking of dub that is not the meaning of siri always walking as if he is very serious only externally that is not the meaning of seriousness seriousness means seriousness of purpose of life that is called serenity and simplicity the same thing is repeated again simplicity of the mind gravity so prabhupad explains gravity means gravity of thought not fickle minded not get agitated by small small things not get disturbed by small small things that is called gravity of mind so prabhupada explains very beautifully in the purport to make the mind austere is to detach it from sense gratification purity of thought purity of thought means don't think in your mind about sense gratification this is the austerity of mind sometimes we think you know hey, thoughts are coming let me think no what does it mean to be austere reject those thoughts that is austerity of the mind take out your mind from such kind of thought keep your mind on pure things that is another austerity of the mind to make the mind austere it is to detach it from sense gratification and then prabhupada is saying how it should be trained it should be so trained it can be always thinking of doing good for others 
The best training for the mind is gravity in thought. One should not deviate from Krishna consciousness and must avoid sense gratification. To purify one's nature is to become Krishna conscious. And then satisfaction, Prabhupada talks about satisfaction. Satisfaction of mind can be obtained only by taking the mind away from the thoughts of sense enjoyment. Both are important. Take your mind away from sense enjoyment and that alone is not enough. Put the mind on lotus feet of Krishna. Mind is like a boat which will always keep on shaking. If you don't anchor it to Maya, Maya if you anchor it, it'll, it is like a strong, it is like a wave, it will keep on even if it is anchored to Maya, it will keep on shaking you like up and down. Correct? That is what Bhakti Vinod Thakur says. What is that song? Ragottam, you remember? Maya Arboshe Jacho Veshe Dugu Bhai. So, it's Maya is always, the waves of Maya will always make you sometimes up and down. That is the waves of Maya. If we get anchored to Maya, the mind will always be disturbed. Take it for granted. So, what the mind has to be anchored to is, we have to anchor the mind to Krishna. That is the austerity of the mind. Keep the mind away from sensual thought and put the mind on Krishna. The more we think of sense enjoyment, the more the mind becomes dissatisfied. This is very important. So, the more you think about sense enjoyment, the more you will be dissatisfied. In the present age, we unnecessarily engage the mind in so many different ways of sense gratification. There is no possibility of minds becoming satisfied. The best course is to divert the mind to Vedic literature. So, what is the practical method? Practical method is divert the mind in reading Prabhupada books, reading thoughtful books. Right? The best course is to divert the mind to the Vedic literature which is full of satisfying stories as in Puranas and Mahabharata. One can take advantage of this knowledge and become purified. The mind should be devoid of duplicity and one should think of the welfare of all. And then silence, Prabhupada says. Silence means one is always thinking of self-realization. The person in Krishna consciousness observes perfect silence in this sense. Control of mind means detaching the mind from sense enjoyment. One should be straightforward in his dealing and thereby purify his existence. All these qualities together constitute austerity in mental activity. And the next Krishna explains, This threefold austerity practiced by men who is not, whose aim is not to benefit themselves materially but to please the Supreme is of the nature of goodness. So, when this austerity of mind, austerity of body, austerity of speech is practiced, not for some material gains, but to satisfy Krishna, that is in the mode of goodness. So, we will stop here. Grantra, Srimad Bhagavatam, Kijay, Srila Prabhupada.